when you look at some of the kind of work that I make, potentially you could wonder, like, why do I need a studio? I think there's a huge myth about uh, digital labor and also artists who work with these materials and that we could really just be anywhere and open up a laptop. More and more with sort of the larger projects that I do and tied and bound to, to my studio. I don't want to perpetrate the myth of like the artist at the computer for 16 hours, but like that does end up happening. But what really excites me is the moment that I need to get out of the studio. I work with a pretty broad range of materials within the work, but more or less everything revolves around the way that we value emotion in contemporary society. To me, the thing that has drastically impacted our feelings and the way that, that we process them and exchange them has been digital technologies. I do think that we live in a really unique moment now that we've been using these tools for some time. The infrastructures that are behind them have become clearer and we're really starting to see an impact on not just the way we live our everyday lives, but the way that we will in the future. So at the beginning of a new project, I'd say that almost always there's a question or there's a kind of blind spot in a previous work that like I just can't address or there's something happening in the world that like I just don't get. So I just start doing research online, but also reaching out to people or visiting places. That's a good way for me to start to understand from the beginning what is interesting to other people that, and sort of to form an argument that this is a work that should happen. So Sprung a Leak is a play in three acts performed across the Wolfson Gallery at Tate Liverpool. It was really born out of a frustration that I have. The online infrastructures that we have to express ourselves, I just don't think they're good enough. I very much wanted to deal with the way that information and emotion as an information travels through space, through us, through the channels that we're given to use, and how we can kind of break from the cycle of creating something for humans that really doesn't fit everyone's needs, or anyone's needs for that matter. The performers are three robots, two humanoid robots and a robot dog, who are in direct communication with three human performers who are tethered to poles and together they try to overcome the multi-channel screen system that surrounds them, that keeps leaking information to them. Did something happen? What are the facts? Check your screens. <gasps> There's a leak sprung. I think the mainstream has really pushed this narrative that a future with automated labor or robots is like a really dark, bleak one in which they're eventually going to try and kill us or take all of our jobs. What I found with this project in particular was that it was more constructive to think about having to collaborate with machines against external forces because I think that's sort of the best projection of what's possible and I just think it would be interesting if we could not push these fears aside but to be able to maybe include some of the other things that we should be afraid of that these fears are masking. One thing that I really enjoy, for better or worse, is what happens after an exhibition opens. I know that because of the way that I build narratives, which is like this hyperlinked kind of one thing leads to another, leads to another, goes back to the other, it's not straightforward. People at some point, their imagination hopefully takes off. And the things that they come up with sometimes, that they think is going on, I'm just as excited about as my initial idea. And the work then sort of in many ways just becomes theirs. <laughs>